Hi, my name is Rebecca Straubing, and I am in the sociology course, Deviance and Social Control. And today I'll be discussing with you the book that we read for our class called No Place to Hide by Glenn Greenwald. Um, and Greenwald was a reporter who reported the story of the le the story of Edward Snowden's um, NSA leaks. And so I'm going to start off with discussing the breakdown of the core core points in each of the chapters. So to begin, there is an introduction that is given, and it's where Greenwald discusses the NSA and all of the eavesdropping they have done on the United States historically and the current story about Snowden. Um, it also discusses his own personal background with reporting on issues of security and how he does feel incredibly strongly about that. Um, and he briefly goes into, he'll go into it more later, but what constant surveillance on a society can do to the people who are always being watched and it can create a compliant and more fearful kind of society. Um, and he goes on to discuss how he's openly discussing and he just like immediately lets you know how strongly he disagrees with government spying and how he strongly is for freedom of speech and freedom of press. So then chapter one. Um, it kind of just goes through telling the story of how Snowden, Greenwald, and then his um, friend, uh, Laura Poit Poitras, all kind of like find each other and how it starts off that Greenwald is getting these anonymous emails and they end up being from Snowden, but it's about him having this huge story. And I think kind of some of the core points of this chapter is to, first of all, call the attention of this issue of this very large story and it does it gives you a narrative background of Snowden's story and of Greenwald's story of coming across this huge news um it gives you a background under that and then more narrative version so you can really understand and kind of when the book goes into later details on the government you have a nice background to fall back on um some more of the core points in it I would say there's a big stress on the amount of security and um, in, like encryption that they have to do on all of their technology and all of the communication that they have through the media that Snowden insists on them to use. And that's definitely stressed in all of the complexities that goes into making your computer secure and sending secure messages. <laughs> um, it also shows the amount of back and forth that Greenwald and Snowden truly did before ever meeting in person and before they really knew what was going on. Like, for a while, Greenwald had no idea if Snowden was even legit, and it took them a while to get there. Um, and there's also a lot. They, even before trying to even get, like, even before they're able to write the story, just to get, like, any kind of newspaper on board, you can see it's the process that goes into journalism and people who write about such touchy and interesting topics. And then, so at the end of the first chapter, um, Greenwald, Poitras, and this man named Ewan, who works for The Guardian, which is a newspaper that um, Greenwald gets on board to help cover the story of the leaks, all go to Hong Kong to meet Snowden. And that's when chapter two begins. And... It's when Snowden had already, on the way to the plane, given or sent Greenwald a lot of the documents, and they're beautifully organized. They discuss in detail about that. And then it let then this next chapter is when Greenwald meets Snowden for the first time in person and his shock on who Snowden is. And that goes into it. Snowden is a young man. He he's just he and it goes into who Snowden is, and that also gives the reader a stronger idea of what this story is really about and that Snowden isn't this old man. And then the Greenwald talks about his interviews with Snowden and how he got to know Snowden more and what drove Snowden to do this and how when one of the things that Snowden discusses is that he is willing to sacrifice his own life in that sense or sacrifice leading a normal life because he feels like it would be wrong to ignore what he has found. Um... And that really gives a strong sense of who Snowden is. There's a lot of description about him, and it gives you a lot of background about Snowden, so you really can understand more um, about that. And then the next kind of part of the... The next sort of portion of this chapter describes um, 
So the Guardian found out that publishing secret documents can be considered a crime. <coughs> and so the chapter goes through all of the complications that can be publishing such a heavy story like this and how there's a ton of craziness that goes back and forth between Greenwald and The Guardian and they don't know how they're going to get the story up. And you learn about, it gives you a really strong inside idea of what really be, being a journalist and trying to get these things published is like. And it, so it gives you a strong insight on Greenwald's world and that he's just trying so hard to get the truth found out and everything that goes into that. Um, and so finally, towards the end of the chapter, the story is published and it has a huge reaction. Um, People are kind of freaking out over it because they're finding out that they're secure, that pe they've been watched. And you still, reading it, you know what's going on, but you don't, they haven't gotten an in-depth look at what the documents are saying. But you know that there's a huge, like, you know the basis. Um, and then in the next chapter goes into very strong detail about, um, it doesn't take every single document, there's, so many of them, but it gives you <coughs> a very in-depth look at um, all of the different documents that were reported on and all of the things the NSA had and many, many details about the NSA. And so <coughs> chapter three is set up differently from the other two chapters in the book where it's pictures, a lot of pictures of the slides that the N of documents in the NSA and then it's Greenwald discussing these slides and discussing these things. And you can see for yourself, this is clearly the NSA talking about how they're spying, how not necessarily spy, well, spying, but talking about <coughs> the use of, of their usage of technology on um, the usage of technology on their own, like, people and how they're all of the different things they're using and there's a bunch of different programs that they have and it's very high tech and it's it's impossible to argue once you see once you read the chapter it is impossible for anyone to argue once Greenwald shows you the slides ex <coughs> <coughs> excuse me <coughs> shows you the, the slides and explains them <coughs> it is undeniably clear what the United States was doing and what the NSA was doing and that it's inarguable. Um, but, yeah, it takes you through that, and it breaks down the different programs. Some of the main... <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, oops, how I go in crazy. <coughs> and then the next chapter, chapter four, is on the harm of surveillance. <coughs> and now you know the story of how Greenwald found, like, got in contact with Snowden, Greenwald and Snowden's actual interviews with each other, <coughs> and then what the documents Snowden gave and showed to Greenwald say, and then the next chapter, chapter four, is Greenwald discussing all of the reasons why this is a big issue, why the fact that <coughs> <coughs> the government has been using technology to watch the U.S. citizens is a huge issue and not something that people should shrug off. Um, and he kind of really deeply argue, goes full depth into it, and some of the points he brings up are things like that um, it, privacy is a vital part of human happiness. Um, <coughs> <coughs> and that the surveillance that has been used is not necessarily... Um, it's, um, it's not necessarily stopping anything. Like, they always argue that terrorism is the reasoning why they're doing this, and he just kind of lists off all of the terrorist attacks that were not stopped by this use of surveillance. Um, and then he addresses, like, why people who say they just don't care because they're not doing anything wrong shouldn't blah, blah. Like, a lot of people feel as though they don't do anything that the government really cares about, so why should they care? And... <coughs> Greenwald pretty much addresses that 
people should care about this because if it's just ignored, surveillance will get stronger and the stronger the government watches you, the less allowance for dis- um, for dissent there is. So it kind of breaks down for you like why he thinks that's wrong. And then the last final chapter is about kind of what happened, the aftermath of the publishing of this for him in his life and how he addresses all of the slander that a lot of other news people put on him for his story and how a lot of people said he wasn't a journalist and some of the issues that he encountered afterwards. Um, he faced risk of prosecution. Um, people thought he was a criminal for even publishing the story. And this, I think, leads into some, like... And he discusses, like, how he... Like, his beliefs, and he's very... He very strongly believes what he believes, and he doesn't hold back in writing about it either. But he is saying that he does he believes that journalism is about being raw and being an outsider and it's not about fitting what the government wants you to say what other people want you to say it's about reporting for the truth and that kind of goes i think into some of the few overall theses into the book and one of those is that i think greenwald believes in that dissent is an important factor of being a journalist first of all or not necessarily dissent but being truthful about what you write and not being afraid to have dissent is important in any society, and that is a vital part of keeping, allowing change and allowing progress is for being able to speak up and being able to write about it and being a real journalist. And that goes into, if you're being watched by surveillance, you can't have dissent in the same way. Um, and they talk about how constant surveillance and knowing you're being watched reduces dissent, it creates fear. And that's sort of, I think, his overall thesis is that this is exactly what Greenwald does not want. This is exactly what Greenwald doesn't agree with, and that is why. Um, and so I personally liked the way the book was set up. It was broken, the chapters were broken down, I thought, very intelligently, in the sense that the first two sort of give you a narrative idea, and then the next two chapters are more Greenwald talking and Greenwald giving you the facts and really giving you exactly what was going on. And it's like a more in-depth look at the story. It's not what you read in the news. It's Greenwald telling you and going through the documents himself. And then it's the next other chapter is Greenwald arguing his ideas and his points. Um, I think it's one of the things that I, I guess necessarily did not like because this is Greenwald's book. But I do think that it's, He's a very strongly opinionated person, which this is a strong and important topic, but I think that it would be interesting to view the other side of the story without him, like, he'll discuss what other people say, and it is immediately shot down, and it's just, it's all, he argues all of his points, and I think it would be interesting to read it from a non-biased, to hear it from a non-biased perspective as well, or to get some non-biased perspective in the book. And I don't know if that's possible for if Greenwald is the author. I don't know if that's a possible thing. But I do think that reading his side of the story is a very important I is very important to really know what happened in this story, but I think that also to get a clearer picture, you should read something else that is a little less biased than Greenwald's story to really be able to come up with your own concept because that's what this story is about. It's a story in the news. And it's, as a person, it's your choice and your duty to kind of figure out your own idea on how you think to go, like, how do you think to feel about this? Thank you.